add to the effect. And there are the poses. Each ceramic art studio figure seems captured while in motion. And I think that's a real key figure here. A three-dimensional snapshot preserving a very specific action and moment in time. One can easily imagine a ceramic arts, ceramic arts figure springing to life. They're, they're very much alive looking. They, they have a pose and an action to them that you just don't see on a lot of other figurines, I don't think. Um, so then, we'll go to this one. <clears throat> this is how they're marked. The mark at the very top on the left is the kind of mark that they would put on the um, art pots, so to speak. And that is, although this one is just its size on the bottom, uh, actually carved into the clay uh, on the bottom. This does not have that first label, but other pieces like that have the label that's on the top. Then a um, paper label, and this cat, my cat over here, I think, has a paper label on it. This was the second one. Uh, they often come out off because people clean the pots or clean the figurines and, and they just don't want that sticky thing on the bottom so they peel it off. No, you don't want to do that anymore. If you find a piece that has a paper label, leave it there. That's how we know it's a ceramic arts piece. And then usually they're stamped with uh, these two um, de decorated stamps. And actually the BH for Betty Harrington would imply that um, she did that design particularly. Um, it, it says, you say that these uh, are uh, ink stamped, or stamped, but actually it's a glazed kind of uh, ink so that it gets fired into the clay and it doesn't come off. Um, and then on the right, one of the ways, and sometimes they aren't marked, like these two you can sort of see the decoration or the marking on the bottom, but this one in the middle isn't. But what you do see, and you should look for, is that little blue streak up there, or that little red dot over there. And I think this one maybe has a brownish something on the edge. Sometimes you have to kind of look in that hole to see if there's a, a, a little one, two, three, maybe even four little dabs of color um, glaze. And what that indicates is the artist who did that piece. Although we don't know all the artists and all their marks exactly or particularly, um, many of the pieces are marked that way. They, and the reason was, as I read in the book, they wanted to, they had such a high standard for the way these pieces were painted. They wanted to see when it came out of the kiln and after it had been fired, who had done it. So that if there was anything that wasn't quite up to standard, they would know which artist to talk to to help get them into doing a better job of whatever kind of uh, glaze painting they were doing. So this way they could go to the woman who was assigned the red dot over on the far right and talk to her and say, no, your eyebrows aren't quite right, you need to do it this way, so that they could practice and get the uh, level of quality equal for all their pieces. So there, there will be little tiny uh, colored dot marks sometimes on the bottoms, not all the pieces, but some of them. And that's another way you can tell that they're ceramic art. And this is a fun picture. Uh, again, in the newspaper, the Capital Times, from November 8, 1950, <clears throat> there was a uh, second annual statewide meeting of the Wisconsin Academy of General Practice, meaning um, uh, physicians. We call them internal medicine or general, what is it called? Uh, family practice now. But the women standing in the back are the wives of physicians. And they've been taken around on a little tour to do nice little wife-like things while their husbands were at this medical meeting. And um, they're standing behind looking at the decorators. And you can see how they've got these tiny little brushes and they're really, this, this one in particular, is really concentrating on what she's doing. Um, but they're all, you know, got their heads down and are really working. There's these tiny little decorations on these pieces. It's just amazing how they were able to paint eyes and eyebrows and things on them. So that, uh, and the interesting thing is that I'll show you, they also went to Century House. The same newspaper article had two pictures in it, one from Ceramic Arts Studio and one from Century House. And so I'll show you the Century House when we get there. But Fos Fosmark was a physician here in the Atwood neighborhood, wasn't he? Some of you remember that name. Pardon? Speak up. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just had to include it. Um, it, it, is, it says at the, at the bottom, the last reunion of Betty Harrington and Ruben Sands in a 1993 exhibition that was held at Ceramic Art Studio here in Madison. So um, the pottery closed in 1955 due to a flood of Japanese imports from World War II. Betty and her husband ran a flower shop on Monroe Street for about eight years. And then she continued to do various kinds of artwork but it was very hard for her because she lost her eyesight due to macular degeneration, and she also developed a peripheral neuropathy, which made it hard for her to feel with her hands. When the Ceramic Art Studio Collectors Club was formed, she was surprised by the honor and respect shown to her and her work, and she did die um, in 1997 in Sun Prairie. And then Ruben Sand uh, tried making some of the figurines in Japan, after the ceramic art studio closed. I mean, he saw that Japan was making these figurines, so he went over there and took some molds over there. But it didn't really work out. And, uh, but he did actually sell some of his master molds to Mahana Importing Company and Coventry Ware. So there are, in a sense, reproductions of these ceramic art studio figurines, a few reproductions out there from these other two companies um, made from the molds that came from ceramic art studio. He moved out to California in 1960 and died in 2005. So um, that's the, the two of them that did ceramic arts. And then there's this woman, and she's sort of the connection, or a connection, between Ceramic Arts Studio and Century House. This is Zona and Sam Liberace in a 1953 photograph. Now, Sam Liberace is the father of Liberace, Liberace. Yes, and they, uh, Liberace grew up in the Milwaukee area. And uh, Sam and Liberace's mother got a divorce in 1941. And in 1943, uh, Sam married Zona uh, Smurfs. And um, Sam Liberace was a musician, and so was Zona, and I think that's one of the things that brought them together. Um, and also I read that apparently the Milwaukee did not have a symphony orchestra back in the early 50s. And so they came to Madison to play in the Madison Symphony Orchestra. And they actually moved first to Marshall, which is just east of Sun Prairie, and he taught art, uh, and no, taught music. He taught music at the Marshall High School. And she got a job as the head decorator at Ceramic Arts Studio. Then they eventually moved into Madison. They lived in two different places, uh, 2638 East Dayton Street, and then they moved to 1106 East Johnson Street. So they were here on the east side of Madison. And Zona actually became the head decorator at Ceramic Art Studio, teaching the women how to do this lovely painting on the ceramic pieces. And then um, when, uh, <clears throat> Ceramic Art Studio um, died, ended in 1955 or so. She went over to Century House and started decorating for Jane Howell at Century House. She also became very close friends because the Howells, um, and I'll talk about that in a bit, um, were very much into the arts community, both um, art, art, and music art, arts community in Madison. And so because Zona was a musician as well as an artist, I think she had a more personal connection, so to speak, with Jane Howell. And they became personal friends. And she would do babysitting, apparently. Zona Liberace would babysit for the Howell children. Um, and then they decided to move to California in 1963, when the Century House Pottery closed. In 1963, they moved out to um, California. But one of the things she was uh, given is given credit for are these uh, wire things that you can put your ceramic arts pieces on. Apparently, this was this was an idea that Ruben Sand had, but she came up with some of these designs. And we have this piece and there's another piece on the back table um, were were designed by Sona Liberace, Liberace's stepmother. I think that's just so neat. Such an odd and interesting. 
little story. And we'll talk a little bit more because we have a, a very special piece of the zone here. And then, um, as I say, uh, in the late uh, 1980s, antique collectors discovered ceramic art studio figurines, some young collectors of um, and 